come as a shock to you, but we are talking about scale changes. We are going to apply a scale change to a function. I don't know why there's an extra blank there. It's a typo. You can just put a star there if it feels weird to have an empty spot. Okay, you can think of a scale change as a transformation of a transformation. So we're going to take something that's already had a transformation done on it, so it's already been transformed, and we're going to do another transformation on it. So we're going to change something that's already been altered from its parent function form. Okay, so for example, here we have the graph of f of x. Now compared to the parent function, is f of x steeper or less steep? Steeper, okay, do you guys see that beautiful vertical stretch? How much did it get stretched by? Two. Okay, so for f of x, we already have a vertical stretch by a factor of two. So it's already had a transformation happen to it. It got stretched. Now that stretch is going to help us write the equation for f of x. So that's part A. We have to write the equation. So we say f of x equals, what's my slope? 2. It's the same as the stretch, right? Okay, 2 in front of the x. And my b value is what? 0, because my y-intercept is 0, 0. Okay, so that's part A done. So now we're going to do a transformation of that transformation. So we already have a transformation. Now we're going to do some other stuff to it, some more transformations. So the first thing is put our phones away and take out our headphones. Okay. So the scale change is this rule y equals that tells us what to do to f of x. Okay, so the scale change says we're going to take f of x and multiply it by one half. Okay, and then we're going to add three more to it. So wherever we see f of x in the rule, that's where we're going to plug in, substitute, 2x. So in my parentheses, I'm putting my 2x. Do you guys see that the one half is a compression? So I'm taking something that's already been stretched and I'm squishing it back. And the stretching and the compressing are undoing each other. Does everybody see what's about to happen? So when I simplify this, I get y equals half of 2x is 1x. I just undid the stretch with a little compression. And then I have my plus 3. What? Oh, shoot. All right, so my y, my b is now 3, and my slope is rise 1, run 1. So compared to f of x, my result is less steep because I compressed my stretch. So this one is less steep. Yes. Yep. And shift it up three units. Oh. 
questions? Okay. Let's continue. All right. This f of x has also had a transformation happen to it, albeit a different one. What has already happened to this f of x? It's not a stretch this time. Yeah, it's a compression. So f of x is vertically compressed by how much? Yeah. No, you're right. Yeah. By one half. So that tells us the slope for our function rule. F of x equals what? One half times our x. What's our b value? Woo Zero, so I don't have to write it. Okay, now, wherever I see f of x, I'm going to substitute that for the rule, multiply x by a half. Okay, so let's plug it in. So we use the scale change, the y equals rule, where we multiply it by 2 and add 1. So we have to feed the scale change our 1 half x. So it started out compressed. What happens if we stretch it back out a little bit? The slope kind of goes back to normal a little, huh? Okay, so we have a new B value of 1. And we have a slope of rise 1, run 1. I'm rising 2 and running 2 to save dots. But 2 over 2 is still 1, right? So it's legal. It's fine. Okay, so compared to f of x, my resulting function is steeper or less steep? Steeper. So this got steeper. And we got to shift up one unit. Okay, questions for me? All right. Let's try this one. All right, this f of x already has two transformations. What are they? <coughs> a what? Okay, a vertical stretch by how much? Two, and then what made the slope negative? Yeah, a rocks. It's got a reflection over the x-axis, a rocks, and a vertical stretch. By two. So... Can you tell us our slope? Close. Were you just singing the words to a song that happened to be close to the slope? No. What's the slope? I don't know. Yeah, it's negative two. So f of x equals negative two x. Can you take out your headphones, please? I was listening, but okay. Okay. Thanks. 
just my face. Okay, what about our y-intercept or b-value? Zero again. Okay, that part was easy. All right, so we're going to apply the scale change, which is our y equals rule. So y equals the opposite of whatever our f of x is, and then subtract 3. So we have to plug in our negative 2x wherever we see f of x. So negative 2x goes right in there. What happens when we do a reflection of something that's already been reflected? Yeah, it goes back to a positive slope. You should be up here teaching this class. So we get y equals positive 2x with a minus 3. So our b value is negative 3. That tells us where to put the y-intercept. 0, negative 3, and our slope is 2. So here's a fun question. On the last two examples, our resulting function got either steeper or less steep. Did that happen here? No, it's the same amount of steepness, right? It just had a change in sign. Okay, so we're going to say that this has the same steepness <coughs> but we had our rocks rocks and we had a shift Shifted down three units. <clears throat> Any questions? Okay. On the back, we have to kind of do the same thing, but we don't get a graph. So it's really important that we kind of keep in our minds what those graphs look like and pay very close attention to the equations and um, which, one, which functions that we're being asked about because it's really easy to accidentally flip-flop. Okay, so we are starting with f of x. That's our start. Okay, what transformation does f of x already have if its slope is two-thirds? Does it have a rocks? No. Does it have a stretch or compression vertically? Okay, yes, which one? Compression, because two-thirds is smaller than one, right? Okay, so we have a vertical compression by two-thirds. All right, what do you think this scale change is going to do if I look at the negative? That's going to make a rocks. Okay, what about the three? What does the three do? Yeah, that's going to vertically stretch by 3, and then what does the plus 5 do? Yeah, shift up 5 units. So we're going to do a whole bunch of transformations to something that already has a transformation. All right, let's do it. So y equals negative 3 times our f of x plus 5. So our f of x is 2 thirds x. Ask your calculator what negative 3 times 2 thirds is. It is negative 2. Do you see that the 3's just canceled? 
Okay, that's cool. So y equals negative 2x plus 5. So we're looking for which one of these is true. So we're going to go through and say whether they're true and false and pick the true one, okay? Is the resulting function or are the resulting function in f of x um, having the same y-intercept? Okay, this one has a y-intercept of 0, 0. And that one has a y-intercept of what? 0, 5. So is that the same? This one is false. All right, the resulting function is less steep compared to f of x. So this has vertical compression. What's that one got? A vertical stretch. So is that less steep than this one? No. Okay, the resulting function has been shifted down three units. That is false. That is some fake news. All right, what about the resulting function has been shifted up five units compared to f of x? That is definitely true. We're going to pick D. Let's do another one. Okay, this time our f of x, our start, is 8x. What transformation do we already have? What does the 8 do? Yeah, it's a vertical stretch by 8. Okay, guys, that's a really steep slope. That means go up 8 and, like, only right 1. It's like, phew, so steep. <coughs> See what I mean? Okay. Okay. Let's plug it into the rule and see what happens. So we're going to say y equals 1 fourth times our f of x minus 3. So our f of x is 8x. What are we doing to this stretch with the 1 fourth? It was stretched. What does the 1 fourth do to it? Compresses it back down a little bit. Not all the way, but a little bit. Okay, so we get y equals, what's one fourth of eight? Two. Two x minus three. So do the resulting function and f of x have the same slope? Correct, that is false. The resulting function is less steep compared to f of x. Is 2 less steep than 8? Is 2 less steep than 8? Okay, we're going to say true and just check to make sure the rest are false, but we think it's probably B. The resulting function has been reflected in the x-axis. False. The resulting function has been shifted up 8 units. Okay, that's not true. It got shifted down 3, right? Okay, so it was B. Any questions about why it had to be B? Okay, perfect. Okay, do you think you can do the last one, or do you want to do it with me? Okay, be careful. You got a negative in there. <laughs> 